This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the HTC Tilt 2 for AT&T, otherwise known as the Touch Pro 2. Now, we've looked at this, well, this is the fifth time now. We started with the unlocked GSM version several months ago, then T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon, and now AT&T. What makes the Tilt 2 different is it's the first one to come with Windows Mobile 6.5 stock. Now, eventually, we hope all the Touch Pro 2s will ship with Winmos 6.5, but currently the others have 6.1. Let's take a look at the device. The design is very similar to all the other Touch Pro 2s. You can see here, but AT&T has chosen to go with the light keyboard, which is okay, but in dark lighting, it's actually a little harder to see the keys. Instead of having the dedicated number row up top, they've done the same thing they do with the Fuse, which is to have a dedicated symbol row up here, and the number pad is embedded, so you have to hit the FN key here. Now, if you're dialing a number, you don't have to hit FN before punching these keys happily. Take a look at the back. It's got the same hinge design and assembly as the other Touch Pro 2 models. Of course, it's going to have an AT&T logo here. still has a little bit of floppy motion here in the tilted position, which HTC says improves durability if there's a little bit of play. I guess it just doesn't wear out as quickly, or as obviously. The back here is gray and shiny, which makes the phone a little bit slippery. Uh, we prefer the, the more matte finish that was used on the other Touch Pro 2 models, but it does look nice. 3.2 megapixel camera here. HTC's Straight Talk speakerphone. This is the grill for the speakers. This is the Straight Talk button. If you're on the phone and you put it face down on the desk, it automatically switches to speakerphone, and it's a very good speakerphone. On the side here we have the volume control buttons, the push to talk button which isn't as easy to press and annoying as it was on the Fuse. The HTC USB port here which also functions as the headphone jack. There is no 3.5mm stereo jack here so you're going to have to use the HTC dongle adapter to use 3.5mm headphones or just use an HTC headset. Stylus is here. Thankfully not needed all that often. And wake sleep button is here. It also powers the device on and off. We've got the same keys that we have on the other Touch Pro 2 models here. Call send and end, the back button and the window start menu key. And you've got the zoom bar here that works in the web browsers and the office suite. And that's about it. Take a quick look at this compared to the Verizon other than changes in the finish. The Ryzen one has the more traditional black keyboard with white masking. The speed on the phone is quite good. It's similar to the HTC Pure that we review that's also available on AT&T. That's the keyboardless cousin to this phone. Tap here and you can scroll through all of your TouchFlow 3D screens. Obviously, it works in landscape mode as well as portrait mode. It has an accelerometer built in, but you can also switch it to landscape mode by opening the keyboard. I've got a program launcher here. There is an AT&T tab, which I've turned off, that has a bunch of AT&T applications. They have put their usual set of apps and trial games on here, but it's, it's not as in-your-face as it was with the Fuse. It doesn't feel quite as ridden with bloatware. If you hit the Start menu over here, you'll see the new Windows Mobile 6.5 program screen instead with the staggered icons. So you can scroll through with your finger. Windows Mobile 6.5 really offers mostly UI changes. And we can see here if we go to All Settings, this is the new Settings screen. Settings here, instead of having three tabs for settings, you've got three folders instead. So if you want to go to System Settings, here you go, right here. There they are. Definitely the screen's 3.6 inch display is lovely. It's very finger touch friendly. It's large enough that the icons are easy to operate. And the keyboard being large and offset is best in business. Let's take a look at a few applications on this. Has a GPS. Has a camera as you can see. There's not much for it to focus on right now, but it's using the entire screen as the viewfinder. Go to settings here, and there's a 
wide array of settings. You can save videos and pictures directly to the micro SD card if you want. Now we'll take a look at Google Maps, which I've installed. It uses the GPS. Comes also with AT&T Navigator, of course, but if you don't, don't want to pay for that service and you prefer Google, you can just load it right on. Gets a satellite lock on a cold fix, usually in under 30 seconds. It's pretty quick. Here we are indoors and it's managing to get seven satellites already. Speed in Google Maps is pretty good. We're downloading map data over AT&T's 3G HSDPA network. Phone has good reception, has excellent voice quality, which means it's great for both internet and for conversation. Let's see, zooming in here. This is a resistive display. Windows Mobile 6.5 doesn't support capacitive displays, so we heard that have heard that HDC is working on a customized version of the OS to add capacitive in the HTC Leo. Got the Microsoft Marketplace, which is new for Windows Mobile 6.5. It eventually will come to 6.1. So this is the Windows Marketplace. You can look at things by category, what's new, what's most popular. These are obviously too large. They're really more optimized, I'd say, for a QVGA display and not the 800 by 480 display used on this device. So once you click on something, you can see a much more manageable looking listing where things aren't so huge. And you can scroll through stuff. Tap on something you're interested in, and you get a, a pretty good explanation generally of what the application's about. A little bit more verbose than, say, the Android Marketplace listings. You can look at reviews, and you can get a variety of screenshots here. There's usually just one on the main page, but you can always get a listing for more. There are a reasonable number of ut free utilities here. Pay for games, and the number of applications is increasing quickly. Given the number of Windows Mobile applications that do exist, we expect that the marketplace will eventually have pretty good listings. Now we're looking at a playing video. This is a, uh, a movie ripped from DVD at 720 by 360 resolution and 2000 kbps. That's a, a very challenging file in terms of bitrate and resolution, and as you can see, it's having no problems playing the video. In fact, it does a better job than most netbooks on the market. So this may be a business device, but it's also a very impressive multimedia device. Next we'll take a look at YouTube playback. This has HTC's YouTube player. Unfortunately, AT&T uh, did not put the shortcut for it on the program menu, the start menu, so we found it in the Windows directory, copied it and made a shortcut and put it in the programs directory for easy access. So here it is playing a YouTube video that we put together of the HP Mini 311 netbook with NVIDIA Ion Graphics playing Fear 2 of all things. Obviously it works well, fills up the screen and the quality is quite good. Lastly we'll take a look at the web browser. This has both IE6 Mobile and Opera. Opera being the superior browser in terms of terms of desktop style rendering. So this is the Opera web browser. Right now this is a portal page that AT&T has set up, which is really a full desktop web page. I'm kind of surprised that they do something that heavy. We'll take a look at our own home page and see how that looks. doing this over 3G. And this is our full site, full desktop site. wouldn't say that Opera loads pages any more quickly than IE6 does, it just generally does a little bit better job with the layout. It's up to you whether it's worth the wait to get desktop style rendering versus a more mobile look. So you can see you've got inertia scrolling here. And it's 800 pixels wide, so it's actually managing to fit the page to width right now. If you want to zoom, you can use the zoom bar, which works pretty fluidly. So 
you see? So that's opera. So this is the HTC Tilt 2 for AT&T. Visit Mobile Tech Review to read our full review.